Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Ebony Ladies in the DR. I'm Bridget. Join me in welcoming our rest of our hosts today. I'm Sheila. Hi, I'm Shan. I'm Tammy. Today, we are going to be talking about moving abroad. And this was a question from one of our fans. So we thank everybody for tuning in to us every Tuesday and Thursday right here on YouTube, 9 yep. p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And while you're watching, if you would, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe. to all your friends to like and subscribe. So our fan wanted to know a checklist for moving abroad. So they are anticipating the move. They're getting ready to do it. I think her time frame was eight months to a year. So she has plenty of time to get all this stuff done. But we're going to get the ball rolling um, with the main things that you need to take care of before moving to another country. And I like moving to another state. Yeah. This is a whole other ball game. <laughs> yeah. So the main thing that I'm going to point out right up front is your documents, your passport, your driver's license. Make sure that those things have at least a one year expiration oh, before you move. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is so important. Because six months, you can't even get back, you know, if it's less than six months. They mm -hmm. won't allow you to travel to begin with. Then once you get here, if things start to come up, you don't realize how fast the time is going to be ticking away yeah. with mm -hmm. that expiration date. So you don't want to get into that legal issue with no. your passport yeah. or your driver's license. <laughs> that's so a nightmare to start with. Right. Yeah. That's a yeah. nightmare to start with. So what's the next important thing that y'all would say? Setting uh, expectation. So you know, just, that's not something that we would think to put on our checklist, but you also want to set expectations of your family and friends of your plans on moving abroad. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely. That's something we forget, but you know, that's yeah. really important is just setting expectations for your for your people, for yeah. your circle. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and along with that, I'm going to say definitely do a will. Mm -hmm. um, when you're moving abroad, you want to have a will in place. You want to leave a copy in the U.S. with the family member mm -hmm. and then to keep a copy with you. The same thing with your documents, yeah. your passport, your yeah. driver's license. Make extra copies, have extra copies on your person, yeah. then have extra copies left with your contact person in the U.S. Well, I was going to oh. say, before you leave, just making sure that you go ahead and just do all your doctor's visits. So go ahead and have that yeah. plan so you're not yeah. scrambling around the last week before you leave mm -hmm. like I was trying to see your doctor your dentist and everything and for me I know I had to explain to them like listen I'm gonna be going for a few months so I need um, I have high blood pressure I need my high blood pressure uh, what's the word medication. Yeah, medication yeah but when you can because you know you can only get a certain amount oh, I got the same thing it's called a um, vacation a vacation like extension vacation something yeah, yeah. so, so they'll, well, they'll get, allow you to buy like a year's worth oh, okay you know mm -hmm. so because you're like well because I explained my doctor, I don't know Spanish, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to find a doctor when I get over yeah. there. So I just want to make sure mm -hmm. I'm okay. So yeah. usually they'll work with you. That brings mm -hmm. up another one. Like you can ask your doctors for recommendations mm -hmm. for um, um, doctors right. here. Mm -hmm. So he actually, I was seeing a chiropractor in Atlanta, and um, he gave me a referral to someone here. So wow, you know you can, really good. Yeah, 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 you can. You know, we forget really to good. do those sorts of things, but sometimes they have networks that we don't know about that we're not privy right. to mm -hmm. that right. they can actually um, help you out, assist you in finding yes. a, a good provider here. Yep, and not all the time, but yeah. yeah. Sometimes, <laughs> you know? and if you're keeping your insurance, I had to let my insurance go because it was tied to my job. But if you keep your insurance, they do sometimes offer overseas protection as well. Yeah. Right. So that if something happens to you, like you said, they'll connect you with a doctor there. Right. I had Kaiser, so that mm -hmm. was a Kaiser policy. So. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And my Spanish. insurance did the same thing. Yeah. Well, I know with United, I have United Healthcare, and I got it through my retirement, so I still have it. Yeah. But um, they told me that they will cover abroad they will cover emergency medical like breaking an arm or like mm -hmm. if you have a heart attack or something like something life-threatening mm -hmm. I mean well your arm isn't life-threatening but it yeah. needs to be fixed <laughs> right. but those my are the arm things is life-threatening I, 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 I need that I need my arm but if it falls so, off yeah, you won't but, die no, I know. <laughs> so it, with that, all that being said about medical mm -hmm. make sure to get copies of your medical records oh, yes. Yes. so that's yes. going to be very important yes. to make sure to bring copies of your medical records yeah. Um, also, with your checklist, go down your insurance coverage. Make sure you have in place your deadline to start looking for international coverage when yeah. you move abroad. Yeah. Yeah. And I have insurance with Humana. They offer excellent um, plans. And they're not expensive at all. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. are one of the things you will want to Good check thing. on. Yeah. Most medical insurances here, they cover medical and dental. 
vision is going to be a separate plan altogether. So that's something you definitely want to think about. Um, Somebody, and also, guys, for our viewers, please check your credit cards. Some credit cards actually offer some traveler's insurance, um, so that could cover a portion of, mm. you know, and the mm -hmm. just check your credit card. Sometimes there's some clauses or some things you're not aware of, but yep. traveler's insurance is one that I hear a lot about on credit cards, especially American Express. So. Right, and, and you so, can also get um, those cards that if you don't already have one, I have a card that rebates my um the fees when i use the atm card right. i have one of those yeah. so at the end of the month all of those extra fees that they say do you want to continue yes mm. i get them back get refunded yeah. nice. charles so charles Schwab. Schwab, right yeah, yeah. So definitely i still gotta think work about on that. that with your credit cards mm -hmm. you know so we don't have a true mail system here in the dominican republic <laughs> no. we don't have mailboxes you don't have to which i love mail, i love right? it because you don't get junk mail, <laughs> junk mail. And all that stuff has <laughs> gone away but with people who good. are not used to using the internet, don't pay bills online. Mm -hmm. So that's something to think about. And I would suggest definitely keeping a U.S. address. Absolutely. Um, so that if yeah. you're planning on having dual citizenship, which Dominican Republic is a country that allows dual citizenship, you'll be able to absentee vote. Put that on your checklist. Mm -hmm. If you're still you know, heavily involved in American politics, you mm -hmm. want to put that on your checklist. But we don't have a mail system. So important documents, things like that, have them go to your U.S. address, and then when you travel back and forth, pick up your mail. So you have to have a system in place for things like that, anything yeah. that you can't get online statements mm -hmm. for. Okay. Yeah, that, you know what? I'm glad you brought that up about the online thing because I had changed it because I'm I'm one back in the U.S. I'm still stuck on stamp and putting okay. it in the mailbox. Although I did have some things online, but that is very important right yeah that's something and, people don't think about and getting to the mail thing bridget you took me to a place in plaza san juan mm -hmm. where you can actually get a things box. delivered boxes of, yeah. some people use it for um amazon, mail, mail, amazon and stuff like that and, so, and they give you an address in the u.s that yeah. you have your stuff mailed to and then they send it here but there's yeah. also fedex here i don't know how expensive right. it. i don't know if anybody yeah, I don't think it's open is yet. Be, yes it's it's open now? It yeah. may. It well before. fedex is on the island it may it might be just new to punta Cana. okay right. but i've seen dhl and i also saw a ups truck yeah. And so yeah, those services are all here. available, but they all yeah. come at a cost. They yeah. are yeah. expensive cost. Well, on your checklist, yeah. Yeah. one of the things I have is to bring necessities. You know, make sure yeah. you have your medication for, you know, up to six months, whatever mm -hmm. you can yep. get, the max. Make okay. sure you have, you know, your favorite deodorant if you're allergic to certain things. Make sure you have your Tylenol, your yeah. bear. So things like that you want to make sure you have because they're a lot pricier here. Mm -hmm. But getting things shipped, if you set up a box, you set up a P.O. box or a mailbox service here, which they have, you have to think about whoever's shipping it to you, they pay on that end. Mm -hmm. When it gets here, you pay on this end. And it is 11, 11 to 17 cents per pound. And it's very expensive. So my mom sent a box. They paid twenty three dollars to ship it to me. I paid for eleven dollar eleven weights, eleven pound 11 box, fifty dollars. Wow. Right. That's the standard. Really? It's, it's five dollars. It's five dollars per pound. Five dollars like per pound. Like four to five dollars a pound. Four sorry. Yeah. So y'all no, no, make that like, correction. <laughs> five sorry, five dollars per pound. Yeah. Oh so goodness. when y'all think about that, that's a lot of money yeah. um, that you're gonna be spending. Yeah. I'm not saying wasting, but if you plan ahead, it doesn't have to be a cost for you. Yeah. So that's definitely yeah. something you yeah. wanna think about. Um, then I said on the checklist, downsizing. You know, mm -hmm. everybody nobody really wants to do it, but homes and everything here are gonna be smaller. And they don't have the true walk-in closets that we have here. So you want to downsize and think about what you're going to bring with you. Yeah. I shipped a container. So if you're planning on doing a container or moving, this is our new permanent home. So we move a container. You're going to be looking at a cost of anywhere from $3,000 to $7,000. Wow. So, you know, they get these numbers in your head for your checklist because that's an expense. And you're asking why is such a range from three to seven? Because it's going to depend on when you're actually moving if you do a 20 foot container. Yeah. And the law in the Dominican Republic requires that you are in the country, 
um, when your container comes across the water. Whether you is they clear for customs two weeks later, three weeks later, you still have to be in the country. Okay, so that's something else. Yeah. Now, when I was looking at um, shipping things here, because that because originally that was going to be my plan. I was going to move down here buy something, but right. um, a friend of mine told me about sharing containers. Yep. And you so can I don't know how people. Then I guess that depends on how much stuff that you're going to bring too. But that can help to alleviate some of the costs if you use a share container or barrels but if you're talking about furniture and like Bridget and Dablin they did a whole house you're definitely going to need yeah your uh, container. Uh, uh, I would your say own container mm -hmm. sorry I would say before you ship anything you should come down and do an extended stay so at least oh, three yeah. months yeah. before you make that big and spend because I would hate for somebody to spend all that money then you get here and you're like yeah no. this isn't for me right but it doesn't work <laughs> You know, so so yeah. definitely put that as a part of your checklist to yeah. do an extended stay. Stay mm -hmm. for a month or two before you make the big move. Now, it, and it wasn't so much that I didn't do an extended stay here. I came, yeah. you know, four or five times before I moved here. So I knew the atmosphere. And, and for some of those times, I did stay for, you know, mm -hmm. longer stays. But I didn't ship a container a container is like a huge, like, right. um, you, what you put it on the boat, the, the, like the, a railroad, like you see on the TV the shows, train, the the train cars. Right, right, right. Okay, right. Those yeah. big so metal. Because boxes. what I used were the barrels, which they also bring over on boats. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're like, they're, I used four huge barrels, which obviously won't, you can't fit a couch inside of them. Mm -hmm. But I got a whole bunch of stuff in there. Like, and here's me packing. I was packing up a four bedroom home with sheets and pillowcases right. and pillows yeah. and clothes that I thought I was going to wear. And yeah. I'm telling you, two of those barrels still sitting in my house. Oh, wow. with stuff in them that I haven't even touched right so yeah. it's really you as to Tammy's point you definitely want to analyze exactly what it is that you want to bring and because yeah. there's something you just don't need right. and if I had to do it stuff. all over again I wouldn't have I wouldn't do it right. I have a uh, you know I would have, you know put some things in a storage unit or um, uh, you know just I would have gone a different way or maybe only got two barrels instead of four barrels because right. mm -hmm. those were there were each barrel was I mean, I, I think I spent two thousand yeah, dollars altogether okay. on the barrels. Yeah, Don't quote right. me on that, but I think it was about two thousand dollars. And you know, again, it was—I I can't say that it was worth it at the time. I was like, "Oh, I got my stuff. That's I was right. happy, you know, yeah. some sense of home." So but you know, it was like Christmas decorations and stuff like that. Come on, you know, you can get a lot of that stuff here. Mm -hmm. A lot of that stuff you can find here. You know, there were some things that I was glad I packed, mm -hmm. but um, for the majority of it, you guys. Do the you know come here analyze and then go back and really downsize downsize right, definitely yeah, and so yeah. then another thing a checklist for you moving abroad is going to be your banking system yes um, we have we kept mm -hmm. our U S bank account and then we got a bank account here in the Dominican Republic and you want to look for your U S bank account that's going to allow for international transfers and wires without a fee. Now, some banks are going to have a minimum um, in your bank account in order to not have the fees, but you still want a bank that is going to allow you to be able to do that because there are a lot of money laundering laws uh, between the U.S. and Dominican yes. Republic. Mm -hmm. So you have to be very careful. You have to be very knowledgeable about um, the laws of the country that you're moving to. Well, we're talking about the Dominican. So you have to just be on your toes and make that definitely part of your checklist for moving abroad um, because you're going to save a lot of money opening a bank account here. Sheila and I think Shanna both use other ways of getting their yeah. their finances and they'll tell you if they want to share what the fees are involved if you decide not to open up a bank account here in the Dominican. I am I didn't I, because I didn't know until you and Davin did it I didn't know that foreigners could open bank accounts here. Yes. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm in the process of doing that now. I'm waiting okay. for my final word because it is a, a long process. process. And process. you have to prove your income. You have to give the, uh, I needed a letter from my bank, bank in the U.S. and a couple of other things that they'll um, tell you that they need. But um, I was spending, the way I was getting my money here was through, well, U.S. dollars was through Western Union. Okay. You all know Western Union charges you a fee. Yes, it So does. each time I was 
going and right. I added up these fees after 10 months right. and it was like $300 yeah. and yeah. I was yeah. like do you know what I could do with $300 hmm. here or oh, there yeah. Yeah. Right. so that's why you know after Bridget and Davins you know told me well we opened an account and I was like well let me do the same thing yeah. but yeah it's it, it can get pricey however if I was using with um, but my spending money money mm -hmm. that I use for shopping and paying my uh, electric bill mm -hmm. I use my uh, Schwab card I transfer money from my US account mm -hmm. to my Schwab account That's and then finish. I withdraw then I withdraw the do Based the dollars there. But I have to pay my rent in US dollars. Okay. So that's Ergo Western yeah. Union. Good. Mm -hmm. I would also say too, I just found out about worldremit.com. Everybody write that down, put it on the bottom of the screen, worldremit.com because they do a lot of free transfers. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, like, so your first transfer is free and then they have like a three and free thing. Like, that's the code. It's, I think it's three. free three. <laughs> and you just put that in and so you can transfer money for free. Um, and then also it's, it's like if you share, like if I share my link with her and then she does it, I get to send for free and she gets to send for free. So it, they're, they're much better than Western Union for any of you guys who are out there and you're like, okay, how do I get money? I like them a lot better. Also, so Western, what, I'm go. sorry. So the money goes from your U.S. account to where? It. Uh, they have a lot of different locations. So oh, here, yeah. Locations. So like, I pick wow. it up from the grocery store. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. from Korea Bay Express. Day, so yeah. it's like it's like Western Union. There's different, except they're not all Western Union locations. Yeah. Uh -huh. they, yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh wow! Yeah. Like kind of how you can return Amazon stuff to different locations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same thing you pick up from different locations. Okay. Yeah. That's um, good. The other one that I would recommend that <laughs> I use all the time as a business owner is PayPal. Mm -hmm. um, because Definitely. they, so yes, PayPal I don't get y'all. I actually, my exchange rate tends to be under the exchange rate, like the dollar to peso Pay exchange so. rate. I Whoa. always end up paying less. Wow. Yes, That's using my PayPal, PayPal business card. PayPal. Business card. Yeah. So PayPal business, PayPal business is really, really good. And the same sort of thing. They also, at the end of the month, they refund me some sort of fee. It, I don't know. But every month I get some refund back. Good. So PayPal is really, really a That's good tool. Good. And more and more I'm seeing people using PayPal here. When I first got here four years ago, a lot of people weren't using PayPal. Like people knew about it, maybe, but now I'm seeing more and more uh, business owners, like, um, uh, yeah, more business owners that are using PayPal. So, yeah. Now, another huge thing on your checklist for moving abroad is that cell phone. Yeah. Oh my God. So <laughs> make sure with your cell phone, everybody needs to give tips on this because the cell phone, um, you want to make sure yours. Um, can download WhatsApp because that's what everybody uses. Everybody. But if you forget to download the WhatsApp before you get here, you want to make sure you turn your your roaming data off so mm -hmm. that you do use it when you're under Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. so you won't get the charges. Then realistically, think about how long you plan to pay a U.S. cell phone bill. Yeah. Because yeah. if you're moving, you <laughs> yeah. know, you got to start letting things go. Yeah. You know, you got to just let them go and then get your local service here, which is a lot cheaper. We did it. Yeah. We actually kept ours through, I think, February or March. We kept our U.S. phone number and all that, but then we let our U.S. number go. Mm -hmm. So make that part of your checklist of notifying people that you're only going to be available through email during your uh, one month transition period mm -hmm. so that's really important to have your email address that and get send it out to people that are closest to you so that in the transition period of letting mm -hmm. cutting off your u.s phone number and getting your new dominican republic phone number yeah yeah, yeah. now that's yeah. important it, go, ahead. Oh, go ahead i always can tell somebody new because they'll have like their two or three, three cell, cell phones, phones. Oh, no, when i know when i can yes <laughs> Like a you know a new person because yeah. they always have multiple cell phones, cell phones. which yeah. is the idea. I mean that's what we're used to. That's the easiest thing to do when you first get here, right. just to yeah. keep your same phone and then get one here. Yeah. Um, so I had went through the same thing too, and then if you know, and then you've had that number for twenty something years yeah. or right. ten years. Yeah. You, yeah. It's yeah. hard to let that go. <laughs> but you eventually do because you get you settled into that help. DR life, and then yeah. it's like okay, you know. I'm tired of paying this $50 
whatever. Sprint bill, whoever, you know. That and you're not using it. Did you not? And yeah. then when phone service is like eleven dollars yeah. here, it's Versus like a hundred and something there. Right? Yeah. Why yeah. am I doing that to myself? Yeah. And you know, at first it's like a. A strong connection like I don't want to let yeah, this thing go and then it becomes a reality check like yeah, yeah. I'm just throwing away money throwing away money yeah. everybody well, now knows and we all talk on whatsapp so everybody mm -hmm. can reach me now yeah I don't exactly. need that number yeah. and I'll say right. something too when you when you first get over here because everybody says okay well I still want to be able to connect with my family and that kind of thing and so um, be careful because like every day I had my cellular data turned off and then I would randomly look at my phone and it would be turned back, back on. on and I'm like how did that happen and yeah and so when I w and I had and I would try to call Verizon but I couldn't it wouldn't they would like block the calls because internet it was just weird guys mm -hmm. and so when I went back to the US for a visit <laughs> Um, I actually called Verizon and they said, oh yeah, that happens. And I'm like, well, I need some of my money back because this is a $300 phone bill when I haven't had my phone turned on all month, you right. know? Yeah. And yeah. so, um, you, you learn quick. You, you learn quick, quick. but, but <laughs> yeah. make sure that you put it on airplane mode. Yeah, yeah that's what I was getting ready so, to say. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. put your phones on airplane mode. Mm -hmm. So just get into the, the habit of doing that now. <laughs> well, see, that's what I was going to say about yeah. my phone. I, have, I still have my U.S. phone. I don't mm -hmm. pay... My phone bill is not over a hundred dollars because I'm a retiree of mm -hmm. the phone company. Okay. So nice. I kept my U.S. number and I keep it on mm -hmm. airplane mode. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. although one time one of the ladies in the store <gasps> turned it off, it. yeah, so that cost me ten dollars. <laughs> but anyway, um, I ended up buying a phone. Oh, and the phone. Make sure that your phone. If you're going to buy your phone in the US or use your current phone because what you can you can change the SIM card yeah and you can also um, you know get mm -hmm. a Dominican number uh, here mm -hmm. I got a phone from mm -hmm. the US that I was calling my DR phone mm -hmm. I hardly ever use it mm -hmm. so I have a DR SIM I have a number but I was concerned about it being able to make local calls mm -hmm. because although there's every a lot of people here on WhatsApp. I was concerned about calling the security, you know, right. the yeah. security oh, right. or call right exactly so calling the anybody local. Using right. a local right. number. Yeah. But yeah. I bought a mobile Wi-Fi, which I carry around everywhere I go. So I use it for making phone calls to the U.S. Well, I use good. it for internet. I use it for watching television online. I just use it for everything. So that um, it worked out for me, and mm -hmm. like I said, I'm not staying here for the long haul. So mm -hmm. I wanted to keep, yeah, okay. keep my phone. Mm -hmm. So now uh, the last thing I think uh, would be important, and I'm going to put also in the comments some information about the barrels mm -hmm. for the person that sent us this a whole um, question about a checklist. So we're going to put some information in there about the barrels. We'll put a couple of little tips in the comments mm -hmm. regarding the cell phone. Mm -hmm. uh, make a little note about the mail, not having mm -hmm. mail. So to do that. And then the last thing um, on this major, major checklist mm -hmm. is a survival kit. Mm, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Yeah, okay. a survival kit. Mm -hmm. So we moved here, um, and we knew that it was going to be a little bit of time before our container would be oh, cleared through right, customs. Right, right. So your survival kit. Don't forget your swimsuit. I forgot my swimsuit. So you gotta, mm -hmm. you're gonna have to go buy a swimsuit. Mm -hmm. So your yeah. survival kit. Make sure you have your swimsuit. Don't bring any jeans. No long sleeve. Just bring your shorts, your sundresses. Yeah. Get your sunglasses. Uh, your sunglasses. Your sunscreen. Uh, make sure you have your copies of your passports in there. Um, in the survival yes. kit, we had our we have came with the dog, so we had her dog treats, her favorite. So it wouldn't just be a huge shock to her coming here. Flashlights. So your, or we had a flashlight, mm -hmm. you know. So you want to make sure you have your necessities because you don't yeah. know what's going to be going on at your new home, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. Really, and you want to have your bath towels, a, a set of sheets. Yeah. So in that survival kit, get the biggest duffel bag you can or biggest suitcase and fill it to the rim and be prepared to pay the oversized overweight fee yeah. you know really for your survival kit, yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's kind of like what else when they say um when you fly and if they happen to like lose your baggage or something like that you should always be prepared with like one outfit or yeah. you know just yeah. something right. in your yeah. carry-on yeah. 
just yeah, in just case. in case. So this so think about something. Think like that, but times ten. You yeah, know, like right. on a larger scale because you're That's moving, it. you're relocating. Mm-hmm. So imagine worst case scenario, you can't get to what you need. Your suitcases or your stuff, like your yeah, container, right. wasn't container. here right. when you arrived. So just think on a larger scale. If something were to go wrong, yeah. just plan for that. And I just want to say for my last thought um, and tip for you guys is just for those of you guys who are moving here as entrepreneurs. So you're planning on working while you're here okay. and during your transition or you're just here for a short period of time. Just making sure that you have all the stuff that you need to carry on business. So your laptop, also chargers. Um, your chargers, making uh. sure also for me, like I can't watch Spanish TV because I don't know Spanish yet. So for me, even just having my Amazon Fire Stick was very comforting uh, that I could yes. watch my favorite. TV shows and then also remembering too that a lot of channels um, for instance Hulu won't play over here right. on a regular fire stick so you right. also have to factor in a VPN which Sheila actually introduced me to so the Nord VPN is what I use so I can watch all my favorite TV shows so when you're thinking about that transition and you're going to be home all day working and, and that kind of thing think about what's going to be comforting to you yeah. and a lot of those things realizing you might not be able to get them here so bring them with you yes yeah and on that, that, that checklist bag, also that survival kit, comfortable shoes. Because you don't mm. know, you know, mm. once you get on the island <laughs> and you're going to make this home, you're not going to be hopping on the taxi all the time. Yeah. So everything, you're going to have a little bit those. of a walk. So you want to make sure to bring things that are comfortable. Yeah. Make sure to bring, um, I we had three <clears throat> weeks worth of clothes because I didn't want to wash before you know the power was on before i got settled you know so i wanted to say i don't want to have to worry about anything so just take put a time frame in mind if it's mm-hmm. a week or two weeks worth of things have that yeah have your your favorite snacks have things that'll make the transition for you mm-hmm. a little bit easier in your survival kit yeah. can i say Go one ahead. more thing yeah, absolutely one more thing to absolutely. all my sisters these are the ebony ladies in the dr to all my sisters okay if we like to do crochet <laughs> we like to do braids all that stuff <laughs> Listen, you're not going to be able to find all your favorite hair products. Bring it with you and also buy hair before you get here because hair here is very expensive. So if you're like, I'm tired of trying to keep my hair straight and I want to get some braids, you're going to go to the hair spa store and you're like, what? When you look at those prices. So so go ahead and ship some of that stuff in your suitcase with you. Yeah. yeah, because uh, yeah, but we'll, that'll be a whole nother episode. Uh, okay. We'll do like a hair episode. Yeah, or okay. Then we can go on about that. Listen, I got to, I got hair more to say on that. Look, okay, but those. I hope we covered. You know, the main things of you getting here especially with the documents and the passports, just to recap, um, just those important things. Make sure you have a will, make sure your insurance, medications, all of those things are taken care of. It'll make your transition just that much smoother. Um, Look us up when you get here. We'll be happy to meet you. We are um, happy that everyone is tuning in. We hope we answered a lot of the questions. Be sure to go in the comments um, because we're going to put a lot of the tips and notes in there for you. Anything we miss, feel free to put it in the comments we are loving your comments we're appreciating all the feedback remember ebony ladies in the dr every tuesday thursday right here on youtube yeah. 9 p.m eastern standard time when this episode ends click like and subscribe and then go back if you haven't seen the previous ones and meet all of the ladies we each have an episode that was all about us so we appreciate you watching everything and tuning in with us we hope you are excited um, for your move to the DR. We'll be excited to have you. And just remember, life is wonderful. Enjoy every minute of it.